is Stephanie with the Freeborn County Historical Museum Library and Village. Uh, joining me is Risha, also with the Freeborn County Historical Museum Library and Village. <laughs> um, I'm the executive director. Risha, Risha does our um, collections and exhibits here at the museum and in the village. Um, we are uh, bringing you our latest version of Cocktail History, uh, where we explore a little Freeborn County history, um, along with a cocktail and a little history on the cocktail. And Is yes, number seven. Number seven. A whole week's worth. Going to be a gimlet this evening, uh, which was an interesting drink to learn about, actually. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's so it's a it's a heavy lime drink, and um, its origins, uh, according to one article I read. On it says are not the most glamorous. Oh dear. So the gimlet came to be um, supposedly Rear Admiral Sir Thomas Desmond Gimlet uh -huh. created this beverage, acting as a doctor to sailors who were suffering from scurvy. Right. Yes. Ugh. Yeah. So for those of you, I, I had to look scurvy up. I don't know oh. if you had to. I kind well, of knew what it was, but I had to look it up. I'll let you talk about it a, a little bit and then I'll tell you, you how I know. Okay. I have a little, Ooh. yeah. A little. So scurvy is a disease caused by a deficiency of vitamin C that um, you get swollen, bleeding gums and, and can cause um, previously healed wounds to reopen. Ew. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the way they battled this on the ship was with lime juice and a little mm -hmm. gin um, but this became known as so it was their medicine um, and it says here so great was their consumption of this medicine that sailors soon became known as limeys oh really I didn't know that. but see I knew that's how I knew about scurvy is I went to a renaissance festival and there was a man there who was um, portraying a pirate and he was actually a chiropractor in real life but he was portraying a pirate mm -hmm. and he had a lime or a lemon I don't I think it was a lime um, in like this netting around his neck and he said that a fairy told him that it would protect him from scurvy so he, he wore it instead of eating it but <laughs> I was a little worried you were going to share a personal story about having oh, scurvy dear. so I was Ugh. no <laughs> yuck Anyway, so so they did this um, little cocktail to um, battle that mm -hmm. that scurvy issue they had on the ships. Um, the other thing I thought was interesting, just kind of jumping a little bit. Um, so it calls for roses lime cordial. We don't have that. We have roses sweetened lime juice. So we're going to do that. Um, but um, the cordial was first produced by Scottish entrepreneur. Lachlan Rose in 1867 and was the world's first fruit concentrate. He patented it and quickly paid off because a year later a law was passed that all vessels should carry lime juice and serve it as a daily ration to their crews. Well, that's smart. So I'm assuming that's where Rose is. That's, that's an assumption. Roses, yeah, Rose is lime. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. A little connection there. Yeah. So, so how do we so today yes the um and there's two recipes i found for this mm -hmm. um the savoy cocktail book which i think is the one we'll follow today okay. is uh, i wish i could call it up but oh here it is 1930 the savoy cocktail book was written. oh right yep so we're gonna follow that one because it's a little more authentic than the newer one sure um, the newer recipe calls for one and three quarters ounce gin and just two teaspoons of the rose okay. cordial. Savoy calls for half Plymouth gin, half roses lime cocktail cordial. And that's the one we're doing. Yes. Okay, I like that better. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I'm thinking we will do two shots of the gin and two shots of the roses and we probably okay. have to mix this twice for two glasses oh okay yes sure. two shots of gin and we got the bombay got again. the bombay again sticking with the bombay for now 
which that kind of feels piratey to me. Bombay? Yeah. Oh, huh. Hmm. Isn't it like tropical? Okay. I think tropical. tropical. Probably because Pirates of the Caribbean Probably. is tropical. Okay. So. And, that, and the Navy was tying into the Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. Yes. <laughs> And so, and when we do this, so this okay, one is going to be two three. of those. Yep. Um, we're going to stir this, not shake it today. Because we got to be kinder to it. Well, um, I'm not, I guess I don't know. The traditional Savoy recipe was to stir. So we're going to stir that up and then we are going to pour it into a um, frosty martini glass. Cold martini glass, I guess. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that smells ginny. So use your strainer. Yay! I like the strainer. Plug it all the way in. Yeah, don't let <laughs> we had a mishap last last episode. Oh. <laughs> Maybe we'll get two out of that. Oh yeah, we'll get will we get two out of that? Yeah. No. <laughs> We're gonna cheat a little bit, y'all. We're just gonna do this. Okay. Here we go. You can share. Yeah, because that actually was a decent pour. So I don't know if you can see the lime color, but it is a slightly kind of yellowy, yellowy lightly, green. slightly yeah, yellow green. And that's that's how you make a simple gimlet. That is pretty simple. It is. So okay, cheers. Right. Whoa, that's limey. It is tasty though. Mm -hmm. I like gimlets. Um, this would be great in like June when it's hot and humid oh, and you're yes. just gonna sit outside after dinner mm -hmm. and have a little sipper. Mm -hmm. This is what I get when I go to the VFW with my great aunts and uncles. A gimlet, mm -hmm. okay. That's, a, yeah, that's nice. I, this is my first time having a gimlet. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we were talking about doing this gimlet and how this ties in to Freeborn County, Freeborn County history. history. And um, so we can go to story time now. <laughs> Picture it. It's 1904. You are a 19-year-old Danish man who has been farming most of your life. And carpentry. And carpentry. Yep. And uh, you have gotten this opportunity to go to the United States, to come to America. Your sister sends right. you a ticket. Your twin yeah, your sister sends you a ticket to yes. come to the U.S. And it was cheaper for him to go on a ship from Norway oh. to Denmark to the United States. So he first he went on a ship to Norway, and then he went out on the Danish ship, the Norga. Yes, I'm guessing that's how you say it. That that's that's right what way. I. That's okay. what I. It's N O R G A. So mm -hmm. Norga. Norga, and it was supposed to take about ten days gonna be on the ship for 10 days left June 28th 1904 and about four days in they hit a rock yeah a submerged rock uh-huh and the ship sunk within 20 minutes um, carrying 774 people and only 128 are known to have survived yeah um, it was one of the worst shipwrecks before the Titanic that's on that's, record. He, um, so, so the gen, do we give his name? I don't think we did. The oh, gentleman we're speaking of is Chris Nelson. <laughs> yes. Chris Julius Nelson. Which is awesome. I love that's that. That's a wonderful name. <laughs> um, and, and Chris actually, um, well, we'll keep, let's keep telling yeah, the story. Yeah, keep going about him. Um, so the Norga mm -hmm. was a, sh it was a ship that specialized in taking immigrants. Mm -hmm. Um, and there were lifeboats for officers. Right. But not for the passengers. Right. And uh, that turned into a bit of a, a scuffle, I guess you could I would say, call it a, a all of a drag down. <laughs> uh, yeah. There was talk of hatchets and cutting off limbs. Right. Because yeah. in an article for the uh, Albert Lee Tribune, Chris did recall sailors taking hatchets and chopping off hands of those who um, tried to climb into the boats. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and he goes on to say in that, that had they gotten in the boats, 
the boat would have sunk and they all would have drowned. Because um, technically each boat was only supposed to take about 15 people. Right. But I know Chris's boat carried a lot more than that, yeah. but still it's, it's, it would have been overrun um, with the amount of people. Right. Right. It's, I thought it was interesting that he shared the, again, as a 19 year old man seeing this, young man seeing this, and that he shared the um, horrific part, but understood what the consequence was, that he recognized that. Um, yeah, so Chris's boat, I, the, the, those, that was interesting. Yeah. Had three Swedes, 16 Norwegians, 12 Russians, mostly women and children. Yeah. And he was the only Dane. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine the language barrier between that whole group. Right? And yeah. how do you, um, I, I, yeah. Yeah. That would have been it. And he didn't talk about that. No. That's interesting. Yeah, I wonder what that was. That could have been very <laughs> difficult. Yeah. Hmm. Also a little humorous, possibly. Maybe that kept them going a little bit. Maybe. Between humor and frustration, I guess. Oh, dear. Maybe. Yeah, but they were on this this boat just drifting about for six days yeah. without any fresh water, fresh food other than the, what like they had on they, their person. No, the or, only food they had, all of their oh, stuff was gone. Right. They lost it when they got- Oh, I forgot about that. The only food they had was a dead seagull that they had found floating on the sea and they divided it up amongst all of them. Now, a seagull's not very big. And how did they cook it? I'm gonna guess they didn't. But you're six days in, like you're hungry. I mean, it probably saved some of them that yeah. little seagull. No, that yes, yeah. That reminds me of Road to El Dorado. That movie. I don't know if you've seen that. It's an animated movie that's fabulous. Um, but they are on a boat, and then a seagull lands on the oar, and then they're like gonna go get it to eat it, and then a shark comes up and gets the and seagull. Gets it. See, now I'm going to another animated movie, Finding Nemo, where the seagulls, mine, 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 mine. Uh -huh. yeah. Sorry, we've digressed now to cartoons. <laughs> um, so they get to the point mm -hmm. on this boat, uh, they've got a bottle and they've decided, mm -hmm. so how would they have decided this? They decided to write all their names down on a piece of paper, put it in this bottle, and they were going to overturn the boat so they would drown. Yeah, That's how desperate they were at this point. And lo and behold, they uh, a Russian steamboat, Scottish, Scottish, Scottish freighter. Scottish freighter. Yep. Yeah. Yes. They see the smoke coming. Yeah. And yeah. And and they started yelling, uh -huh. and they weren't sure until it turned around that it had seen them, and and they were rescued. Um, sadly, one of the young women by that point on the boat had died. And two other young women did not make it. Uh, they were not nuts. They couldn't save them. Um, and 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 Chris ends up coming to America. Yeah. And eventually he coming to Freeborn County. Yep. Two um, started in Blooming Prairie, I mm -hmm. think. Yep. Yeah. And then yeah. ends up ends up being a volunteer here, here. at the museum. Um, so if you come, I'm going to hold this up. If you come to the museum. Chris Julius Nelson yes. built most of our exhibit cases. Mm -hmm. We have the they have these big windows in them, and yeah, he yeah we have that picture there. He's building that. Yeah, yeah, and you've said it a couple of times. The the photographs we've seen of him, he just looks like a, a sweet oh a my gosh sweet man. He's uh, you can't see this on this photo, but uh, he's got this little smile on us. He's hammering every little nail and. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's he he he's got a we've got a little piece of him here, mm -hmm. um, but he spent his whole life then I, in Freeborn County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, doing a lot of carpentry and mason work. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh my gosh, yes, yeah, some really yeah. fun. Um, oh, I'm gonna go back what to my did, notes did here, you, do you a, guys. Like Hawthorne School? Did you do Hawthorne? Um, I wrote it down. I wrote some down somewhere, but where did I put it here? He, um, oh, here it is. So Chris um, helped build the top two floors of Hotel or right. Albert Hotel. Uh -huh. um, I like this part of the story. When it was considered one of the area's finest. Oh. So um, we will be opening our hotel 
no, Hotels oh, of Freeborn County mm -hmm. soon, and um, we will be featuring oh, a lot of the lot hotels of and hotel and trying to do some of the finest mm -hmm. hotel events around this exhibit. So that's kind of fun. But he also built the Clarks Grove Red Oak and Hayward Creameries. Oh, it's the Creamery. That's what it was. Okay. I love the Clarks Grove Creamery. It's one of my favorite buildings in the region. I would love to get my hands in there and restore it mm -hmm. and create um, just a fantastic living space. That's my pipe dream. <laughs> um, he also did 11 county schools, country schools. I didn't have county, no, country schools. Okay, yep. And um, the first bridge on Bridge Avenue, right. which was designed and made he designed and he designed and made the the uh, form mm -hmm. for the dam that was then part of that. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So then he's, he's all over Freeborn, yeah. yeah. and he's in our museum not just with the cases he built. He is featured in our settling in Freeborn exhibit, and especially on our iPad mm -hmm. that we're gonna have set up. And you can go on there, click on Denmark, and then he is up in the left corner. You tap him, a little picture of him comes up with a sweet face, and it has a little bit on him. Yeah. Yeah. And that exhibit should be opening, uh, well, it should be ready by the time we are allowed to reopen again, mm -hmm. uh, which our date, target date right now is January 6th. So, um, yeah, he's featured in that along with uh, just a lot of really cool collection items mm -hmm. and and other people that have helped yeah. form Freeborn County. Um, yeah. So I guess in uh, honor of Chris, his survival, yes. and in uh, being thankful we don't have scurvy, we'll do a <laughs> cheers, and we'll see you next week.